Hello, welcome to IMO with me, Aaron Bastani. You can follow me on Twitter, at Aaron Bastani. You can follow Navara Media on Twitter, at Navara Media. Like, comment, and share this content under the hashtag IMO Bastani. And you can, of course, subscribe to this channel by clicking below. Thanks for watching. This Wednesday, we saw the largest demonstration against higher education tuition fees since the very large student protest of 2010. I want to give four reasons today why we need to get rid of tuition fees. Number one, young people have never had it so bad. While the focus, to a great extent, has been on higher education tuition fees, £9,000 a year, and a student debt, which as of this year's cohort of graduates will be around £44,000, low pay, declining pay, is also a massive issue for the young. We know that the average household has seen average pay decline by about 8% since 2010, an astonishing drop. But actually, that's even worse for the young. This week, I discovered that the average pay for 18 to 24 year olds has now gone back to levels last seen in 1988, around the same time when their parents would have been entering the labour market. Measured on an hourly basis, those in their 20s have seen pay decline by 12% since 2010. Low pay is a huge issue for the young, as much as tuition fees and as much as student debt. While the national guaranteed minimum wage as of August this year is about £6.50 for the over 21s, we know that it's incrementally adjusted by age. If you're under 21 but over 18, you get £5.13 an hour. If you're under 18, you get £3.79 an hour. And if you're an apprentice, you get £2.73. Who the hell thinks an independent person can live on those kinds of wages? We know that a living wage in the United Kingdom is around 750. In London, it's about a pound more than that. When an apprentice is earning a third of the living wage, it's clearly not meant to be able to sustain a person living and having to look after themselves. David Cameron recently at the Tory party conference spoke of offering the choice to young people of earning or learning. But when the choice is one of very low pay, precarious work and 44,000 pounds worth of debt, it doesn't seem like much of a choice to me. If he's serious about that choice, clearly you'd need to see a massive increase in the minimum wage to at least 10, 12 pounds an hour and the end of incremental adjustments by age and the abolition of tuition fees and with it, the liquidation of all existing student debt. Number two, the new system costs more than the old one. So while you would think that a tripling of tuition fees would mean more money going towards universities, you'd be wrong. A new official forecasts by the Treasury show that a 45% non-repayment, that's 45% of the annual £10 billion worth of student loans being made, will not be repaid, all but nullifying any savings that were created by uh, the change in the fee system after 2010. David Willits is already on record as accepting that the non-repayment rate is rapidly reaching the 48.6% mark. That's the threshold at which experts claim the new system costs the taxpayer more money than the old one. So while students are burdened with unprecedented amounts of of debt as they enter the labour market, the taxpayer is also getting a bum deal. The question is, who the hell wins from this ridiculous, absurd, dramatically idiotic system? It's almost like you want to say to David Willits, David Cameron, Nick Clegg, Vince Cable, guys, it's okay. Put your hands up. Say, I screwed up. This was the stupidest piece of public policy Britain's probably ever going to see. I screwed up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's the most reasonable thing they can do right now because it's simple as that. This system's not going to last. It's got five, ten years in it tops. It's going to collapse. It's almost like it wasn't built to last, right? It's almost like this was purpose-built to fail, you'd think. And maybe it was because there's no reasonable explanation for why you would ever implement a system as stupid as this. Number three, because society benefits from large numbers of people, or basically everybody, being able to access higher education. Notice how I say society and not economy. These are two separate things. Education, higher education, should not be about serving the interests of the economy and of capital. It should be about serving the interests of personal, individual and social flourishing. That means for us individually and, of course, for society more generally. You could say that the university is a quintessentially bourgeois institution in terms of how the capitalist class has reproduced itself, produced consent, and organised in the last century the labour market. And that's why fully automated luxury communism requires a new vision of the university. But that can't start as an abstract blueprint. That needs to start in the fight for free education in the here and now, and for everyone, as a social good and not a commodity. That has to include different syllabi, different pay structures, the end of precarity and low pay in HE for both teaching staff and support staff. All of this, alongside increased pay for apprentices and the young, uh, has to be placed alongside the battle to eliminate student fees and eliminate student debt. And that's maybe going to take 10 years, but I'm increasingly confident that it's possible, probable, maybe even inevitable.